Welcome to the Baby You've Got This podcast. My name is Kim Kent. I'm so excited for you to be listening in today. I am a sales-based business coach. I specialize in mindset and I'm also an online business professional and network marketing professional. I love to help ambitious women who feel stuck, unclear and tired of not getting results to achieve the skills to build a six plus figure business and overcome all the BS that is holding them back from genuinely achieving the goals that they desire. I do this via my transformational and unique coaching experiences. Plus you get all the free goodness from tuning into my podcast. I'm all about empowering and inspiring women. So I really hope that this episode today gives you so much value, so much inspiration and gets you to think greater. If you'd love to learn more about me and check out my offerings, you can visit my website, www.kimkent.com.au. Otherwise, sit back, relax, tune in, and I really, really hope you enjoy this episode today. Welcome back or welcome if you're brand new. I hope you have been enjoying this year's transmissions and downloads that I've been having to share with you because I just feel like the world, my world, people who I connect with, their world is definitely in a different space, a beautiful space, a space of opportunity, a space of beautiful growth and up-leveling and transformation and what a better topic to relate to that is running a business while pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to chat to you about that. And you might be like, oh, but I haven't had a baby yet. And you might not feel like it's relevant, but the lessons and the things that I want to share is relevant to everyone. My circumstance is just physically that I'm pregnant, but you might have circumstances going on that are Uh, creating limitations or forcing different transformations with within you hope that makes sense so um, or maybe you are pregnant or maybe you're thinking about having a baby or maybe you're like yeah I've done the kid thing I am not looking back they are well-grown children if not teenagers but this is this is the reality I'm keeping it raw and real and what it's been like running business whilst being pregnant well i'm gonna try and pick out the main points otherwise we will be here all day (laughs) don't want that do we so for those of you who don't know i'm in my third trimester i am coming up to 37 weeks you may have actually you might be listening to this and i've already had the baby (laughs) but i am one almost one week away of the full term zone and i am so ready for her to come she i'm more than happy for her to come early as long as it's past 37 weeks i can have my beautiful l natural home birth in a pool i've got the pool i've got my midwife sorted um i am a big believer in natural birth and natural physiological birth which is in my opinion the the normal way to give birth where i birth my baby i physically birth my baby i don't rely on doctors or other people to intervene because it's my body and i'm birthing the baby and i just genuinely believe like hundreds of years ago when before we had all this intervention we birthed our own babies (laughs) but the beautiful thing is we have the gorgeous i have a gorgeous midwife who's very well educated and then obviously I'm not a person who's against medical intervention if it means saving lives. Um, But I'm just so, so excited to have my home birth. And that has come with its challenges as well because in the climate that Perth is in right now with all the dictatorship and restrictions and mandates, it's put a lot of pressure that I've tried to avoid by home birthing. But... I guess I'm always going to have some something come along and teach me teach me a lesson and teach me to surrender and relinquish control and do my absolute best and channel in and do what's best for this baby. So, but running a business while pregnant, gosh, especially if you're in that fired up, motivated, inspired mode 
where we feel in flow, like we've got the hustle and flow absolutely in balance. We're going, things are happening. We've got the energy. We've got our morning routine down packed, all of that jazz. Well, get pregnant and it's like <laughs> a big ass spanner gets thrown into the works. Like just shit, hit, shit does hit the fan. It hits the fan. So I fell pregnant June 2021 just trying to remember and I found out towards the end of June I found it pretty early because we'd been trying anyway um, and this is my first successful pregnancy I've had two miscarriages one was really traumatic one timed the same time as Daniel's sister passing in a car crash so at, if I think about it it didn't feel as traumatic because we had so much other trauma happen you can listen back on other episodes I've shared the story and everything there if you're not up to date with it all but yeah I've ha had those two and it was really scary it was really scary once we fell pregnant and I couldn't help but not think the worst case scenario and everyone's like don't stress Kim don't worry about it blah blah and I'm like oh uh, yeah easier said than done I can't just switch off the thoughts like I do have this uncertainty and this anxiety in this first trimester of making sure I don't go to another miscarriage because they're fucking horrible like they're fucking horrible literally life a life force leaves your body and it's it's so fucked up like anyone who tries to make it seem like oh we're gonna get over it I've had this many like oh cool that's your journey that's your story doesn't mean it doesn't take an effect and I'm pretty fucking strong when it comes to my mindset if you haven't noticed that already like I am really strong but it still messes with you it still brings up all the thoughts. But anyway, so running a business, get pregnant, and then all the emotions, all the hormones hit. I literally spent weeks, like from week six to week nine, maybe week 10, so nauseous that all I could stomach was salt and vinegar chips and solo because water made me feel sick. It was all day nausea. I didn't vomit, but I've never been a vomit person. It just felt really low in my gut, not like high in my gut stomach like I wanted to vomit it was just oh this fatigue and nausea I was just like I'm so grateful to be pregnant but it sucks so much like this is so ugh. and I'd, I'd just come back from a business conference with my network marketing business that I work with it was so amazing it was so good to be able to reconnect in person because the year before it had to be all online 2020 you know what happened that year and it was so amazing. I had so much inspiration and just felt so connected and guided. And then, bam, pregnant <laughs> on the couch, Netflix, can't, don't have the energy or the mindset to talk to anyone. Um, my, I run two businesses. So I have my network marketing business, which is amazing. I absolutely love it. And side note, newfound gratitude coming into giving birth and having this business where it still pays me and I can take maternity leave and my business still keeps going like how amazing is that like I couldn't this is why I started it in the first place along with all the other freedoms and opportunity and, and things that it gave me and yeah but I have my second business is I do coaching so business and mindset slash life coaching for the ambitious woman who feels like they're not getting ahead they're sick of not getting results they're tired they feel stuck and they need that guidance because they know whatever success they want to create in their life, whether it's business, some of my clients, it's more life, like it's not about business. They just want to get ahead, especially financially. A lot of the outcomes is financial and I do that. I teach people how to not have to worry about money, implement money allocation, wealth principles, and learn the skills of a six plus figure business owner. It's, ama it's amazing. I love it. But anyway, with that... It was a bit of a mouthful. You can check out my website with the link in the notes section below if you'd like to have a nosy. And yeah, I had to like, I could do some calls like when I was feeling up to it. It was so amazing because it made me, it did actually make me forget that I was pregnant because I was so in the zone. But I had to uh, thank God my clients were so understanding at the time and they'd been working with me for months anyway. And then I fell pregnant. So they're like, yep, all good. But yeah, just it was crazy having that the first trimester just being so nauseous and so energy depleted and literally being forced to rest and then feeling like 
you know, it felt, it felt like a depression, but I didn't, this, I know this is, okay, just a disclaimer, I do not mean for this to sound insensitive or anything like that, but I have, I do know people who've had depression, I have suffered a little bit of, a, in the past where I've had suicidal thoughts, and so what I want to say is like, it felt like I was that super depressed feeling, but I didn't have suicidal thoughts, I didn't want to end my life, but I was feeling like, what's the point? Why am I even doing all this for? What's the, like I literally was questioning life, but I didn't want to end my life. And I was like, is this normal? Like, what the hell? <laughs> Why do people not talk about this when you're pregnant? Um, so I'm talking about this now. If you haven't been pregnant yet or you're about to go through it, like if you have these depressed thoughts in your first trimester or any time during it, but you don't actually want to end your life, like you are normal. It's our lovely hormones are messing with us. But we do need to make sure we have the support. So I made sure I talked to hubby. He knew exactly how I was feeling. I have a few close friends who have been gone through pregnancy and they were really helpful and supportive. So make sure you have a support network because if you're like me and love to do everything yourself, it doesn't really help in this scenario. So anyway, that happened. And then, oh my God, I hit the second trimester and it was like clockwork and I couldn't be more grateful because I know not every woman goes through this, but I had the perfect stereotypical second trimester. It's like this huge wind of energy came back. I felt amazing. I had a little bump. I felt so fucking inspired. Like I had the biggest boom in my business in my second trimester because there's overwhelming passion and, and desire to really show my baby. Like you can have your happiness of freedom and money too, which is what's been driving me my whole business career because I saw my parents both trap themselves and settle into jobs they do not like just to create a financial stability for us kids and for their life and I know that they if I look back I know they're just trying to give us the best life but all I saw was my parents un be unhappy and have to work like you have to work really hard and burn yourself out and not enjoy your job just to earn money so you can have money to live so I genuinely thought okay you can be either be happy and free but have no money or have money and hate on life and just feel anxious and, and broke but then the thing was is it felt like we were broke anyway oh <sighs> anyway crazy 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 so yeah it's like this new wave this extra oomph came and really solidified why I do what I do and it's to show that you can have your cake and you can eat it too because otherwise what's the fucking point in having cake I say this all the time what is the point in having a cake if you can't eat it so you can have the happiness and freedom and you can have the money and it has been a true testament to my hard work consistent effort I should say building an online network marketing business and an online coaching business to show that I was like I can do this I don't need to go work for someone else I can do this for myself like I've come from scarcity I've come from anxiety and struggle and debt and worry I've come from low self-worth low uh well high self-doubt and I've been able to make this happen and if I can do it like I'm showing my barb like I'm breaking that lineage of poverty mentality in my family I'm showing her that when she comes into this world like there'll be that energetic presence mum can be mum and a badass businesswoman she can do it and she is doing it so yeah that's what I was going through in second trimester business was on fire I was running extra courses and had more women come and join me with my one-on-one -on -one. I launched the her divine riches eight-week money course which we've just wrapped up now and we're actually a bit sad because we're the course is over and all my ladies in there are just like oh it felt like family and it's come to an end so I'm running it again after bub's born so it will launch probably April time so if you've had, if you've been seeing that or you want to learn how to never have to worry about money again, grow self-worth, grow your self-confidence, embody that higher money-making self and implement a system of wealth principles so your money is organized the best it can be and appreciated, this is going to be, this is a course for you. So I'm going to run it again and then we have a monthly support and ongoing support afterwards because, um, you know, financial abundance is a journey, not a destination. It's all part of it right now. 
where you are at right now can always ever evolve and grow and expand. So anyway, I launched that. That was amazing. I had, I, I, I'll share this with you. Uh, it's the highest amount of money I've ever earned in a week, which was $25,000. And I don't share that to brag. I don't share that to trigger or anything. And that's how much, half of it was up front, half of it was through installments. But I generated that much income in a, in a week. <laughs> and I was just like, holy shit, this pregnancy thing is awesome. This energy is awesome. And, and I was so grateful for it because I implemented strategies, launched strategies and whatnot. And this is what I teach my clients for those who are launching online businesses and, and wanting to expand. One of my beautiful clients, she just did this same method too and was blown away with how many people signed up to what she had to offer. And she's a social media strategist and manager and has this amazing course for it. Her name's Steph Bell Socials or Miss Steph Bell on um, Instagram. I thought I'd share that with you because if you want to go follow her, she's amazing. And yeah, anyway, that was second trimester. Second trimester, yeah. All, all everything was just rolling, rolling, rolling. It was great. And then we're coming up to Christmas and I was like, woohoo, I can relax. I was genuinely looking forward to Christmas to connect with family. I just love the festive season. So that was all good. Running business through there, that was awesome. I stayed organized, I stayed disciplined, I did all the things, I took advantage. And and don't get me wrong, I have to say, like it's not that it all came easy. I took advantage of how I was feeling. I felt good. I was in flow. There were mornings I woke up and I felt shit, but I, I stayed disciplined, did the meditation, did the exercise, got myself into that state that I needed to be in, and I just did the work, and it paid off big time. So this, even if you're not pregnant, guys, like there's your answer right there. Like do the work, even if you feel shit, get yourself self into a space where you don't feel. And then Christmas came and then I started to transition to third trimester and oh my gosh. <sighs> First of all, something I looked forward to, which was Christmas and festive season. I absolutely love it. I love that holiday vibe and that energy and I thought I'd be okay. I've, I napped on Christmas Day, guys. I do not nap. Even to this day during pregnancy, the one time I have napped was Christmas Day. <laughs> And because always, I, no matter how much if I nap, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. I'm sure that will change once Bub's here because I'm going to have broken sleep and all of that jazz. But up until then, yeah, I, I napped on Christmas Day. I couldn't, obviously I couldn't have my, I had one mimosa. Judge me all you want. I do not care. It was delicious. And, but normally I would have my bubbles at my morning mimosas. I drink bubbles through the day. I love my rosé. New Year's we'd celebrate. I just loved the, not super hardcore party but just that festive vibe it, it just I love it and because I couldn't do that and I was so tired like the fatigue kicked in and then the heat Perth had a bloody heat wave which normally I'd be fine with but being pregnant you feel like you swell up like you just I don't even know how to describe it you just feel like you're swelling from the inside but your skin won't stretch so I know I'm supposed to be talking about business and pregnancy, but I, I kind of had a break from business over the festive season, but this is how I was feeling. So then as January kicked back in and, and getting back into it, that second trimester energy boost was non-existent. I used it all up. It was all gone, all done. And then now I had this new, I had this new inspiration for this year and, and going forward and becoming a mum and transitioning and transforming into a mum and a business owner which really makes me feel excited about my future. It really does excite me. But I also had this, like this weight. <laughs> yeah, well, I did have this weight, this growing baby in my belly who I can feel all the freaking time. <laughs> She's there. <laughs> and um, I just had this weight and this like fatigue, this layer of fatigue. And it, it honestly felt like when I had to show up to do all my things which I wanted to do it took a lot of effort like it took a lot to get me into state to get me to do the things when my body was like trying to pull me back and be like just rest Kim just rest so in these last few weeks I've found that being pregnant and having a business is the desire to be successful 
to continue to grow success, to reach goals, that's all there. My mindset around that is all there and I'm hungry and I'm excited and I'm determined. But I've had to learn, well, I don't think I've learned it yet. I'm learning to surrender and let go. Definitely had some big lessons that's pushed me to do it and really just be in the flow. And I mean flow as in like, What's the bare minimum, high priority, high paying task that I can do to attract in business and not chase the business? And in business, you do have to attract and chase. People think you can only, like, I just want to attract. Yeah, it's not duality. The chase meaning there's follow-ups to be done. There's systems and strategies to be in place so things are looked after. You know, if you make a sale in business, that's not done and dusted. Like, you need to do the, the customer care, the the continual nourishing, like whatever you look after or whatever you learn to handle, you'll receive more of. So from that side of thing, I've talked about that in a previous episode. Anyway, so yeah, I've been really forced into this. How can I do what I need to do without overdoing it? Because my body is, pregnancy is really making me get really grounded and, and transition into motherhood. So I hope me sharing all of this has made sense because I wanted to share (laughs) pregnancy and running a business but I wasn't going into like nitty-gritties of business it's how I've been feeling and, and how I've been handling my feelings and choosing how I show up but what's been really beautiful with being really transparent and open and honest with my gorgeous team and clients so they understand as well because I still have my beautiful one-on-one clients and I've just launched the MLM Success Club because being a successful network marketer from the last eight years, turning over seven figures in revenue, over multiple seven figures in revenue, um, I've turned over, what is it? I can't think of, I can't remember the number exactly over my head because I worked it out, but I've been obviously turned over pay more profits since then, but way over half a million dollars in profits in the last eight years. And the first few years, I treated this business like a hobby, meaning I got paid hobby money. So it wasn't the whole eight years. It was, I kind of kicked my butt into gear after the first few years. And I was like, right, treat it like a business, get paid like a business. Then it started to pay me like a business. But Um, I've had so many people in other network marketing companies always asking for advice and and reaching out and I love it because I love sharing and helping people. So I created the MLM Success Club and it's amazing. We have a beautiful bunch of network marketers, ambitious women. It's open for men too, but majority of MLMers are women. (laughs) And I just, all my mindset and business coaching, all incorporated and specific to building and sustaining successful network marketing and how to do it right and how to do it authentically and not to support the stigma to actually show that this is a proper business model and run it like an actual business and you will succeed it's direct sales online so I'm actually going to talk about this in an upcoming podcast with traditional business versus direct sales by the way so very interesting for you to educate yourself and inform yourself and know that information But yeah, so I've launched the MLM Success Club. You can check it out. If you're a network marketer and you love my shit, (laughs) you're going to love this. And it's $9,000 worth of value, which you can get for $49 a month. Like it's fucking so good. The value is incredible. But I understand the average network marketer, you know, we only earn a few hundred dollars a month as we're getting started, but we want to learn the skills to have a six plus figure business. I learned the hard way and the long way. So now I've made it into a program where you can learn the short way and the fast way and start implementing straight away. So yeah, check out the link in the notes. It's called the MLM Success Club. You can just Google it. It's it's all there. And we absolutely love it. So I launched that in my third trimester because I knew that even though how shitty I was feeling being pregnant, like low energy, low motivation, really being pushed or pulled, whatever word you want to use, to slow down, surrender, all of that jazz. My goal was to launch this alongside my own business to have that space there. So how can I still be of service and still keep my identity of being a business owner and a businesswoman, an empowered and embodied businesswoman, but also become a mother? 
And I don't ever want to lose my identity outside of becoming a mum. Becoming a mum is a part of my identity. And I, I have seen friends and family uh, hit depressions and just go into states where they feel like they've completely lost, excuse me, who they are. And then they find it really hard to get back on track. And I have all intention to never lose myself. So I ask myself, how can I have have it all? How can I, because I'm the master creator of my own life. Remember I talk about this. You are the master creator of your own life. What is the identity I'm going to become? I don't want to just let this take over my life and I lose who I am. I am transitioning into this new person, this layered person, motherhood. I'm adding a layer and from that, that, that layer adds onto my identity, doesn't overtake and become my new identity. So how can I be the businesswoman and the mother? And these are the questions that I meditate on, I journal on, and the things that come up is, you know, what do you need to do? How do you need to keep showing up? And what, how do you need, or how do I need to keep serving others as well as serving myself and my baby? And it's been so, so powerful. And you might be like, yeah, but how, Kim, how? My answer is not going to be your answer. Like you have to ask yourself that. How, how do you need to show up? How can you keep being of service to yourself, to the identity you want to maintain and withhold, or the identity you want to transform into? Because maybe you are transitioning out of old identity, which is something I help my clients with. You know, old beliefs, old limiting things. And how, how can you transition in so you can still keep being of service? with how you show up in your life, in your business, with your family, with your career, with your finances, with your, in the sexual part of life, with your circle, in your community. So, so powerful. So I've definitely rambled on nice long one for you today. And I hope that that adds some light or gets you questioning or thinking about some things or has inspired you. And yeah, stay tuned for all the baby spam that will be coming on my Instagram. If you're not following me, you can follow me, like links in the show notes. Or it's just Kim Kent, double underscore. And follow me, follow all the spam, all the baby spam. (laughs) But I hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful day. I hope this puts some things in perspective. I'm here to chat. Please reach out. You can book in a free call with me and chat and see if, if I can help you in any way, shape or form. And yeah, just use this year, use this year to really up level in your identity and how you, how you identify with yourself and your values and what you bring to the table and what you want to create for yourself. Like I couldn't be more encouraging with that. So I'll chat to you next time. See ya. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. It means absolute world to me that you were able to do that. I really hope it added some value and inspiration into your day, into your life. Please leave a review. Please share on your socials or with your friends. I would absolutely love to have your help with this impact that we're making for empowering and inspiring ambitious women to get out of their own way, to have the tools, to have the strategies, to think greater, to evolve beyond their current issues and limitations. Like we're all a part of this big journey together. So I really hope you enjoyed. Again, if you would love to check out my offerings, head to www.kimkent.com.au or check me out over on my Instagram, which is at kimkent2 underscores in a row. (laughs) And we can chat. I'd love to follow you back. And I'll chat to you on the next episode.